We tend to associate certain behaviors with certain breeds of dogs. We think that retrievers retrieve, hounds chase after scents, herding dogs are good with farm animals and so on and for good reason. Because genes that these breeds inherit and common behaviors that they display are seen across individuals on average and that is what these breeds were bred for in the first place. But there are many golden retrievers who can be aggressive and bad with kids. There are many huskies that don't howl and there can be many rottweilers who are, let's say, not brave. We do also stereotype and we think that, for example, pit bulls are aggressive and scary because they were bred for the cruel and inhumane bull baiting sport. But most people who actually have pit bulls at home will tell you that they are basically lap dogs and are highly sociable and friendly with humans. So exactly how much behavior of a dog is dictated by its breed, which are behaviors for which specifically the breed was created? This has been a question that has been raised for decades now and it has always been hard to quantify because we've never been able to collect so much data at such a large scale and that to have genetic data to confirm breed ancestry. But now we do and scientists finally have some answers for us. Turns out dog behavior is dependent on breed surprisingly little. The study surveyed the owners of 18,385 individual dogs, which were both pure breed and mixed breed. Mixed breed dogs contain two or more breeds in genetic ancestry and they are known as mutts. In India, of course, we call them Indies, the strays that we typically see. Although we do have Indian dog breeds like Bulli Kutta, Rajapalyam and of course the Indian Spitz, that is mistakenly referred to as the Pomeranian. This study was performed in the US and in the study, 51% of the dogs were mutts, 49% were pure breed dogs. The authors asked the owners of these dogs over a hundred behavioral questions in multiple surveys. And these questions were things like how the dogs acted when a stranger was present, how much a dog was stimulated by new toys and so on. The questions were categorized into eight, how social dogs are with humans, how stimulated they are in various new settings, how they play with various kinds of toys, how they respond to commands, how they react in uncomfortable situations, how social they are with other dogs, how they interact with their day-to-day -day daily environment and how much physical contact they make with their owners. In addition, there were swabs collected from all of the dogs for genetic analysis as well. Then the authors analyzed genetic data to determine the dog's breed ancestry and then to see how much of the dog behavior correlates with this breed ancestry. The authors found that breed was indeed a good indicator for some traits. Naturally, topping the list is physical attributes or looks. Physical attributes are of course heritable or inheritable, which means they get passed down in the breed. That's a no-brainer and includes not just size and appearance of the dog, but also specific things like size and shape of the ears, length of the coat, how silky it is, coat color patterns and so on. Among behavioral traits, retrieving was the most heritable. Golden and Labrador Retrievers, for example, don't really need to work on figuring out how to play fetch. They naturally retrieve a toy and bring it back to the human. Such behaviors that are linked to motor patterns like see a toy fly, go chase it and then once picked up, head back home. These kind of motor patterns are highly heritable. These traits are often work traits and behaviors. This is specifically what the dog was bred for before appearance came into the picture. Even things like avoiding getting wet, for example, is heritable because some breeds don't like it, while some which were bred to swim absolutely love the water. But for behaviors like biddability, which is how well the dog listens to commands, it wasn't really shown to be heritable. Other behaviors also, such as the one the authors describe as an example, circling before pooping, 
these are not heritable and not defined by breed sometimes even things we stereotype a breed with and associate with its work related motor behavior were not present in those breed dogs there were huskies that did not howl in the study while there were labs that did there were border collies that did not herd and there were beagles and pugs which are generally a bit more independent that listen to every command from the owner The takeaway from the study is that it is very hard to determine which behaviors are in a dog because of its breed and which are there because of its personality, environment and training. In fact, the researchers could not find a single behavioral trait that was present in only one breed and absent in all others or that was present in all dogs of a single breed. At the end of the day each dog taken separately was not a stereotype of its breed it had some traits we ascribed to the breed but also did not have many ascribed to the breed and additionally had traits that were ascribed to other breeds the same was the case with mutts their individual behavior was not dependent on their bloodline this is not to say that the breed does not influence behavior in any way at all in a large enough sample size golden retrievers on average are more likely to listen to human commands than labradors for example it becomes significant statistically not at an individual level any labrador owner will tell you that it is not at all hard to get a labrador to come to you if trained to and there are many golden retrievers who just will not come when asked because they just don't want to So while there is a higher probability of a behavioral trait being displayed in a breed individual behaviors are not dependent on the breed at all The findings from the study are all open the authors created a community science project for the study called Darwin's Ark which will be linked below and an interactive dashboard of the results are also present with really cute graphics Dogs were domesticated independently in different parts of the world at multiple times through history starting 130,000 years ago according to dogs genetic data. Archaeological evidence establishes that by 12,000 years ago ancient dogs were living alongside humans all over the world way before even agriculture started. It is also well established that dogs and humans evolved together and shaped each other's evolution. Unlike other animals that work for humans or that humans work for, dogs have evolved to work with humans. Dogs diversified in general as they became more social with humans because their primary motivator is being able to integrate fully and survive in functional human societies. So even though dogs came from wolves, they started to change in appearance and behavior over the thousands of years that they lived with us. People did start to breed dogs for their skills and talents, but the 400 or so modern dog breeds that we have are just about 200 or so years old. Dogs have always lived with humans and were used for work and companionship, but something changed in the 1800s. This was peak colonialism and there was an influx of wealth into Europe. Everyone aspired to be like the royals. And in England, the royal family was and is a big fan of dogs, more specifically certain dog breeds. Each individual monarch had their own preferred dog breeds. They had since the 1600s, but the media of the 1800s made dogs fashionable. Queen Victoria had a portrait done with her favorite spaniel on her 17th birthday and other royals had their favorite breeds which featured prominently in art and when photography came into the picture everyone could see exactly what the royals had and how those dogs looked suddenly breeds exploded in popularity and dogs started to become prized for how they looked rather than how they worked The idea of breeding dogs became fashionable to high society and so many people started doing just that. In fact, there was so much breeding and so many new breeds being created that elite breeders established very stringent criteria which led to the formation of all these kennel clubs which we know today. 
These clubs even today focus a lot on physical appearance and show breeds. It has been hard to conduct large scale studies on dogs genetic data because such a large amount of data is needed and so much of even behavioral data is up to interpretation. How good are dog owners really at assessing if their dog is calm or nervous or agitated in a new environment if that behavior is not on overt display? But citizen science projects like this filled with detailed questionnaires are filling this gap and giving us long sought answers. People who work with dogs like dog trainers, rescue agencies and volunteers, veterinarians and even bomb squads and disaster response teams have always known that dog behavior depends on individual dog personality, not breeds. Today, breeds have more genetic problems than ever with their rampant popularity and trade, leading to unhealthy and unhappy dogs. When it comes to adopting a dog, a rescue is highly recommended. At this point, I have to acknowledge that it's a little hypocritical for me to say this. My family lives with a golden retriever. But from my own observations, I can see that a lot of her behavior especially behavior with humans, is also because of her personality and sometimes very much unlike other members of her breed. During this pandemic, pet adoption has gone up tremendously and if you have stuck around until now and you're considering getting a dog, well, we now have scientific data to back the fact that adopted mutts and rescues and indies behave very much like breed dogs even if they might not look like one. It is now established that how dogs behave with humans is dependent on breed is a myth. <laughs>